afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Ascenda webinar, where we're going to be talking about how to drive high performance or how to do one-on-ones, um, effective one-on-ones, when managing your workforce remotely. So this is a continuation on our employee engagement webinar. We ran around two or three weeks ago, and we got a lot of questions and comments about one-on-ones and how to implement those and how to get our managers to do one-on-ones. So we listened to you guys, so we thought we'd want to run a webinar dedicated to this particular topic. So as you can see on the screen here, we've got Mel and Georgina joining us today who will be hosting the webinar. So um, as you can see, we're all remotely dialing in here, working from home. So we thought you we'd show you guys our lovely faces so you can kind of put the name to the face. But um, during the webinar, if you have any questions, please ask them in the question box or the chat box on your screen there. Um, we also have some polls during the webinar as well. So we'll, we'll make this a bit more interactive as well. But um, enough from me, I'm gonna hand it over to Mel and Georgina now. Take it away. Oop, I think you girls are on mute. <laughs> Thank you. How many times has that happened on yeah. video conferencing yeah. right lately? Please make sure you're off mute. Step one. <laughs> Put off mute and don't swear. I got it. <laughs> How you doing, George? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. All right, so today's webinar, we are going through, like we said, the magic of one-on-ones and how to manage your workforce remotely. So how do we continue, you know, good business practice and business as usual while business isn't as usual, as they say. So we're going to set the context and understand the state of performance management in the current climate. Uh, most common challenges in this process and how to do one-on-ones uh, and then the value and the magic of these one-on-ones and why it's really important now more than ever to continue with this. And then we'll follow up with some next steps for you. So context, you might see, uh, and you, everybody obviously already knows this, but you would have seen this in the last webinar, that we've got a large amount of employees now working remotely, working from home. Uh, so this presents a whole bunch of operational issues um, as well and today we're going to cover off some remedies for that. Um, so some of the challenges are mobilising the workforce to work from home, we've got isolated employees, so we've got a bunch of employees that are now not able just to look over, oh, here we go. One second, guys. Okay, so you can see that we've got uh, isolated employees. So people, employees aren't able just to lean over, you know, the desk or say to someone, "How can you help me now? What can we do?" Um, or do you remember where this is or that kind of information. So it's a little bit difficult. It's also very isolating, and we've seen um, lots of, you know, stress and anxiety, engagements going down. There's a bit of confusion, there's a lot of fear and lack of control, a lot of lack of feelings of control. Um, so what can we do about that? So we're gonna talk about a bit more of that. What's interesting here is um, we've got, what would you say that your people costs are typically around, you know, 60, 70% of your operating costs. And that's just a blanket rule. It might be different for different industries, but predominantly speaking, your human capital, so your people cost, is about 70% of your operating cost. Yet 2% of your technology spend goes towards managing that cost. I know that whenever I show this to some clients, especially HR, they're just like, yeah, we know this. And then when we talk to executives about this, it's, they scratch their chins and they're like, yeah, I guess so, sort of thing. So uh, it's interesting to see that one of the largest operating costs has the least amount of IT support. So we have uh, a great sales excellence team here. Georgie actually manages that team, you, George. <laughs> I do, yeah. So uh, I had a chat to them and I said, guys, what are you hearing out there when you're speaking to our uh, customers? What are they saying is like what's top of mind? And that's what's kind of framed the uh, webinar we have today. So they said, you know, when we're in the office, you know, we could manage paper manual processes to some extent, right? So that was feasible. While not ideal, it could still be done. But now that we don't have that option as much, you know, they're looking for alternatives and getting prepped for the future. 
So a lot of HR people are actually hiring less now. Mm -hmm. So they're not doing as much of the process of new hires. There's still some happening, but you know, it's kind of slowed down a little bit. And so now they've actually got some time and space to go, all right, well, what now? So how do we respond to the current state? And then how do we get ourselves ready for the ramp up and the return again? Mm -hmm. so did you know that more than 80% of performance management processes are still old world appraisals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I think there's, a, there's another great stat that we talk about a lot with our clients and that's actually pretty relevant to HCM. So there's only 20% market penetration of HCM across you know, Australia, the US, Asia sort of space. So 80% of organisations, regardless of industry, are still running on manual Excel spreadsheet paper process. Mm -hmm. um, now that the world's been ground to a halt, I shouldn't say that. Now that things have slowed down a little bit and we've been thrown this COVID curve curveball, it's like now now what do we do? Because you know the manual processes are even harder to maintain. Some more evidence to show the impact of that. So when we have a look at, we did an analysis of some of the top companies and we looked at their employee effectiveness or their human capital effectiveness. Um, so we call this return on human capital. And what's really interesting is that they've all been declining in human capital effectiveness and they've been doing so for sort of 10 years. So you can see the trends going down. What is really curious here is when you have a look at 2008, you can see that big fall, that dip there, that's actually GSC time. You know, it climbs up again, but ultimately it's, we haven't quite recovered, it's still going down. Okay, yeah. so. This is just some interesting data and analytics, and we can help you actually run this data across your organisation as well. But we're setting the scene here to look at the state of performance management, you know, and the productivity of people. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, yes, performance management is good to have conversations and drive engagement, engagement, etc. But performance is about productivity. Yeah. And do you find, Mel, in some scenarios where companies actually go out and employ more and more people, yeah. and actually the productivity and the output is less. Correct, yeah. So the spend going is increasing, but the output's less. Yes, yeah. yeah, very good. So exactly that. So people can hire, a lot of the time the thinking is, we'll just throw more resources yeah. at the problem, Yeah. and it's not necessarily getting people more effective. So it's just increasing the problem <laughs> rather than right. actually finding the solution. Um, so, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about um, the remedies across this, but I think this is a really clear piece of evidence to show that manual paper processes don't work very effectively. Yeah. If the outcome is productivity, which normally it is. <laughs> so why are we going to bother with performance management? Uh, and I think it's good for me to define as well, when I say performance management, I'm not talking about the to the punitive. I'm not talking here about managing the three or four or the, you know, 10% of non-performance. And if you've got more, whatever that may be, we're talking about the mass here and how do we manage the organisation to a great performance outcome. Okay. So performance management is a massive source of competitive advantage and if it's implemented correctly. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about what that means by implemented correctly as well. The performance management done well improves communication, clarity, productivity, and employee engagement. And what are the things that we identified is, you know, um, problem and risk areas at the moment, communication, clarity, productivity, and engagement, right? Mm -hmm. So we can actually cover off quite a few of those things within this um, piece of work or this scope of work. Most organisations are still running on annual appraisal systems, which we know, and we have a really great white paper, which, Michelle, is there a way that you can grant access to or send this out, the white paper on, perform I should have asked you this before the webinar, but performance versus appraisal. How can yep, we... Yeah, I can link that in the chat, so that's all good. Thank you. Marvellous. I guess it's important to understand as well, as much as a, a system's going to help that automation process, it's actually not going to drive the outcome. This is where we need to make sure managers and people are on board to change. Right. Yeah. So we're not automating current state because current state's not working. Right. So the solution doesn't mean just put it online. In fact, um, you know, I was talking with some consultants just yesterday actually, and they were speaking the truth around um, successful implementations and it's what we, you know, uh, to our ethos here at People Stream and Ascender as well, and that is, um, you know, it's equal parts people, process, and software, and the software is the easy part. Yeah. 
all going to help you. Yeah, we need to check. Yeah, we can build a framework, but there's other things that need to happen with that. Yeah, definitely. Good point, George. Okay, so challenge one, appraisal conditioning. Managers have been completing appraisals for years, <laughs> or maybe not at all. <laughs> they don't want to change unless there's a good reason to change. You don't need to change management to help managers what's in it for them and break out of the appraisal cycle. So what we're saying here is, you know, you probably, everybody's probably had to deal with this. I don't need to do this. I've been here for 40 years and I've never had to do appraisals or, yeah. you know, my team knows what they to do or, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, but it could be a, I had an example um, speaking to a client a couple of days ago and I said, what is the challenge around these sort of appraisals and these reviews? And they said, well, our current review takes us three hours to go through. So then there's no incentive <laughs> for the managers to sit with this team and go through these. It's the so opposite, yes, isn't it? That's right, yeah. It's driving down compliance because it's like yeah, a mountain to climb. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. And I guess, um, you know, we're not like, no, but I don't know, like nobody's been through this experience. Nobody's been through a pandemic, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, things that, the requirements are different now. The situation's different now. So change is inevitable. So challenge two, we will redesign the forms to enable one-on-ones. That's quite often what we see HR try and do as well is, oh, we're just going to redesign this. We're going to take away KPIs and just have good conversations. Because I think the KPIs are the problem or the blocker. And we yeah. just want people to have good conversations, right? The common one I hear, do you hear that too, George? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So forms don't work for one-on-ones. So even if they're having good conversations, how often are we having those? Is it once a year, good conversations? Like, and what's it around? Yeah. You know, if we're having regular conversations, are we typing them on bits of paper? Are we emailing, like, the sea the of emails to each other? Like, how are we recording this? It, are we recording it? And if it's paper processes, then, again, the managers get to the end of the year. If you've got eight people reporting to you, sometimes more, but if you've got eight people reporting to you and you've got to shuffle around all the one-on-one -on -one notes per person, for each review, the one-on-ones aren't going to happen, are they? No. And what does a good conversation look like? You know, you have to take a step back sometimes and say, you know, if there's not a quality objective written, then it is an unclear conversation and yeah. the manager may have sort of a bit of anxiety going into it because they don't know what to discuss. Yeah, it becomes more of a personal conversation right. in business context. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, and then visibility on these one-on-ones. If managers have no visibility, then they won't do them. Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah. If there's no visibility up the chain, you know, then it's, it's hard to know what's going on. Uh, I know a chief, uh, I'm going to just call him the chief. <laughs> he's, he's a chief, like in the C-level, C-suite, he's director of a business. And the challenging part is that, you know, he can't be everywhere. Yeah. Right. So like any chief, they have to engage their leadership team to run the business, but he can't be everywhere. And so having that visibility across the organisation is powerful so he can identify hot spots and cold spots and apply remedies where need be. Without that, he's just chasing his tail, yeah. just running around. And that's a good thing. Like a question I always ask as well is, you know, are all your managers having one-on-ones? And typically the answer is, well, they should be. Mm. But we don't know. Yeah. And that's if you don't have hate, if HR don't have visibility either, that's then right. that's a tricky one as well. Challenge four, assume people know how to do it. Most yeah. people don't have the skills to set and align objectives. Therefore, one-on-ones are difficult to complete. For example, if the objective is increased quality and the conversation is vague and fluffy, you know, as is the objective. Yeah. This reduces adoption as one-on-ones take long, become vague, fluffy, manage to see little value. This is what you were talking about, George. So um, having clear quality objectives doesn't mean it's, you know, um, riding your employees or, you know, cracking the whip. It gives them clarity. We can understand what needs to be done and then we can provide them with support. So I see managers as like, you know, they're the, ideally their role is to remove roadblocks to my success. Yeah. So if I'm, you know, with my manager, if there's things that are stalling or not working, I've got a clear objective. If there's a blocker to getting that objective, my manager can help me remove that or, you know, navigate that so I can be successful in my role. That's right. And there's no uncertainty. It could, it, there's no room for, I presumed it meant this or it could have meant that. Mm -hmm. If it's clear, then both parties are completely aware. Yeah. Less stress when it's more clear. Yeah. 
Uh, Michelle, have we got a poll we want to do here? So what do you think is the biggest challenge in getting your performance management process to incorporate in one-on-one? -on -one? So we're going to ask you to participate. This will test who's listening, who's awake. Uh, <laughs> Michelle, I might let you take over. Just pop yeah, in your... So I've just opened the poll. So um, I'll give you, I'll give everyone about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, I can already see a lot of you going in and answering the questions, so which is really good. So we're asking you, what do you think is the biggest challenge in getting your performance management process to incorporate one-on-ones? You know, A, we're still paper-based and this does not enable one-on-ones. And I guess in this time when we're trying to manage remotely, um, this would be pretty hard. Our executives don't understand the concept of one-on-ones or we need to do a whole lot of change management in order to do one-on-ones. So you could have all three of these, but we want you to pick the one that applies most to you and your organisation. So we've got about 10 seconds left till I close uh, the poll. Thank you all for participating. This is really great. Yeah, I guess the question all right. comes back to the paper. Is it a process issue or a people issue? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Both. <laughs> close the poll now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to share the results. All right, so we've got 28% saying they are still paper-based. We've got 29% saying our executives don't understand the concept. And the majority have said we actually need to do a whole lot of change management. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that, I think that doesn't surprise me in comparison to some of the sort of conversations I have with clients. Um, it's getting our managers to buy into that, having that one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. You know, they see it as just another exercise that they, a lengthy exercise that they just don't want to do. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So what is a one-on-one? -on -one? It's a conversation that's based around employees' plans, objectives, behaviours, competency, learning and development plan. The conversation is focused on achieving the plan, not generalities. So it's not just how was your day stuff. Um, although it's okay to be human and ask those things as well, but we just want to make sure that we've got some focus here. The conversation is recorded in writing, and so the next conversation can reference preceding meetings, you know, um, and as well as the status of objectives as well. Um, you know, if we can record, you know, whether they're on track, off track, that sort of thing is always helpful because, again, visibility for a snapshot view for a manager is always going to be more powerful so they can allocate their time appropriately. You know, you can look at something and say, okay, cool, out of eight people reporting to me, these three here have got, you know, a bit of, you know, red and yellows. So let's, you know, have a bit of a chat around that, that sort of um, context. So when we do a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, actually we practice weekly one-on-ones yeah. here in PeopleStream. Um, and that might seem like a lot of effort, but it's actually really fast because the more frequent you catch up, the less things are happening in between. So it's a really quick sort of, you know, 15, 20 minute chat. We've got time for longer if necessary, um, but it really means that we're checking in on that regular basis. And it's, I think especially right now, it's really valuable for us to have that time one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. A lot of people do stand-ups. I know that I've spoken to a few clients who are doing stand-ups, so they have their morning huddle sort of thing where you've yep. got the team together and everyone okay. still does that you know on zoom or whatever you know tool you're using but one-on-ones give you know that more focused time for the individual to succeed so we're going to set this is the whole context here we're going to set some face-to-face -face planning at the beginning of the period whether it's a financial calendar or whatever type of year it is you can start right now uh, and then we're going to have some agreed objectives and we're going to have regular catch-ups throughout the year so ideally, by the time you get to the review stage, it's like a 12th one-on-one or a, you know, maybe yeah. a 53rd one-on-one if it's asked. <laughs> and I think that's important, obviously, for any organisation that's going to introduce this process is understand sort of where they are, are at. Yeah. Is it monthly that they do one-on-ones? Is it weekly? And that just might differ depending yeah. on the organisation. Yeah. yeah, a lot of clients actually say what we're going to do is it, so we're going to start the year here. We're yep. going to have an end of year review and we want everybody to do a minimum of six or eight throughout the year and it's yep. at the discretion of the manager and the employees. Some people will naturally do it more and you'll start to see a correlation between output and the regular catch-ups 
And that's when you can amplify success in the business and say, all right, well done to the IT team who, you know, has been has completed all of their one on ones, you know, and continue to do them, you know, and exceeding that that measure. Uh, online learning as well. So we can't do anything face to face right now. <laughs> so this is kind of a no brainer because business doesn't stop. Compliance still needs to be had. Uh, and so, you know, there's an opportunity for a lot of HR professionals, learning professionals and um, organisations to start a proper learning strategy. And that is around how do we make sure we get set some clear learning objectives, we can enable online learning content you know, um, allow employees to create their own learning pathways and have regular catch-ups to track the progress and success uh, and then communicate that to the organisation as well. So, you know, Georgie's now qualified in PRINCE2. That means that she can help with project management. It's fantastic. So if we need to, you know, put those skills over there, then that's powerful stuff. But it's the, the game and the world of online learning is, you know, um, it's constantly changing. Uh, we work with Go One. I'm going to talk to you about um, some packages, some industry-specific packages available through Go One. We'll go into that a little bit later. But Go One are basically a content aggregator. Uh, they have over 160 different content providers. So what that means is that you've got, you know, both locally-based compliant content, so courses to keep you compliant, reduce your risk. But then you've got a whole plethora of learning available to help employees upskill themselves. Imagine what it would be like if people came back to work more skilled than when they left. It's not that we've left work, but left the office. Yeah. Say. You know, this is a great time. So we're seeing some projects being put on hold. You know, people are just kind of quietening down a little bit in operation. Some things aren't operating. Mm -hmm. So now is actually a really good time to do all those things that you never got to do before, right? Mm -hmm. So to get some of that learning, to get some of the compliance done, to upskill our employees, to do those projects. So why do one-on-ones drive outcomes? It's recorded. It's not, oh, I thought you said, or what about that? It's iterative. It's once a year. It's every month or every week. It's closed loop. So you said you were going to fix X. How did you go? Uh, it's supportive, so no assumptions that employees should know how or when to do something. So even now more than anything, this is really important. So, you know, managers aren't physically with their employees, yeah. you know, and so catching up with people and, you know, checking in on them, say, all right, this is what we said. How did you go against that? What can we do to get better? Is, you know, like any... It's funny, team, really. <laughs> a client said to me a couple of weeks ago and it really sort of sat with me and I've thought about it ever since. And she said, from our customer perspective, they can give us feedback on what we do well and what we don't do well at any point of time. Mm -hmm. And yet our employees get one, one chance. Yes. And when she said that, I thought, yeah, that's very true from a customer. Yes. They can do that all the time. You yes. can give reviews or, you know. Totally. Yeah. And we use the uh, a sporting analogy as well. So if you look at any great sporting team, you know, the coach doesn't sit there and say, all right, good luck. There's the Premiership Cup. Go get it. And then at the end of the year when they didn't, goes, all right, what did you what did, what did you, you learn, on? guys? What do you want to do differently? And what can we improve on? They meet after every single game, don't they? And they refine, they, you know, bridge gaps and they get better. So why one-on-ones achieve organisational outcomes? Objectives are tested many times over. Quality of objectives increases as they are refined. This means that you get to a point where the objectives are truly smart and um, aligned to achieving organisational outcomes. Alignment increases the focus ultimately. So what we want to do is have quality and frequency equals output. Yeah, we want to make sure that's aligned to what we're trying to achieve because people can still be doing great stuff, but it might be on a different project that's no longer aligned. You know, they might have decided to go off the path and we go, okay, that's actually not working, bring it back. Sometimes we try things and that's okay, but when we see that it's not working, bring it back rather than wait to the end of the year and go, oh, we really missed the mark. And we have an expectation for managers to write quality objectives, but have the organisations always given them the support or the training on how to do so, mm. which is another thing. To yeah, it's part of the change management is yeah. the communication piece. Uh, what does the CEO get from one on one? This is an interesting one. So better focus. Everyone is focused on what is important to achieving the CEO strategy. So right now, strategies might be changing. There might be some readjustments. So we need faster execution of strategy because yeah. it's a change and it needs to be executed down. If we're um, 
cascading our strategy down manually or we're doing, what are we doing? We can't do roadshows right now. So what are we doing Zoom calls? If we're communicating it, you know, that way, it takes three to six months for it to hit the streets. Like, you know, you think of a new plan, you draft it up, you've got to communicate it, then it's got to filter down to all the teams. So faster execution of strategy, which is better focus, better engagement and better feedback as well. So what do managers get from one-on-ones? They get better performance. Like most managers are KPI'd on the performance of their teams. So this is the what's in it for them. They get uh, less noise and less problems because they can see the issues early and remove those roadblocks or provide some intervention that's required. Fewer behavioural issues. For example, better teamwork from the staff that normally don't contribute. So if you're able to clearly align people and you're measuring people against values and behaviours, something fantastic starts to happen when you do have regular check-ins. So on a one-on-one -on -one basis, not just for stand-ups, the one-on-one basis yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And better engagement as well. This means more discretionary effort. So when we talk about engagement, when I say we here at you know People Stream Ascender, we mean driving discretionary effort. It's not just about being happy, because what people can be happy doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so George, you're a manager. Do you find that what's been uh, the key uh, benefit to you having you know your team and having this sort of system to like the people stream system to work online one on one. Yeah, I definitely think it's a really good tool to support me. Mm -hmm. um, but like we've discussed, I think driving that change behaviour as well. So moving into this working from home environment, we had stand ups here all the time, uh, face to face, and we still catch up regularly every day just mm -hmm. for five or 10 minutes. But I think being able to really listen and acknowledge an employee on a one-on-one -on -one basis is really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, understanding how they're feeling through these uncertain times, you know, hearing that they're maybe less motivated or more motivated one week for another and being able to fix that on the spot. Yeah. Okay. Not waiting until the end of the month or six months in and realising there's an issue. Yeah. Being able to drive performance there and then, definitely. Yeah. Or waiting to get the data back, which can, whatever That's right. role might yeah. be. Like here in the office, you can hear the guys on the phone and, you know, chatting with customers and you can hear if something needs to be realigned or readjusted. That's right. You don't really get that when it's remotely, but checking in with them, you know, one on one is great. Mm -hmm. And what do employees get? Because a lot of people say, how do we drive this behaviour? How do we get it? That's why we're doing the, the what's in it for me based on CEO, manager and employee. So they get better focus, better feedback, better engagement, better recognition. These are all the things that people are saying is driving down engagement. You know, lack of communication, lack of feedback. You know, I don't know what's clear, what's not, managers and so on. You know, people leave managers, not organisations. That's a pretty common um, saying that people know, know about. And it was in our last webinar, um, some of the data around that as well when we did the engagement webinar. And what does HR get from one-on-ones? Because everyone thinks, oh, this is more work. I'm going to have to chase one-on-ones from people. No, not at all. So better process completion. Performance is now alive. Not a once a year chore that people, it's not a compliance tool to keep HR happy. So we want to get, again, it's better engagement. So your engagement score scores should increase if you do this correctly. So, you know, this means, because, you know, you're addressing those four factors that are driving down the employee engagement stuff we talked about earlier. So your engagement scores, you know, should really increase. Yeah. Um, which is always going to make you look good, right? Uh, better recognition. HR is seen as a major contributor to organisational performance, which you are. Remember, 60 to 70 percent of the operating cost, you know, is the people cost, and HR are the people experts. So, how can we drive a greater return from that? Less issues. Employees' issues are picked up earlier and dealt with before they become major issues. So, less legal issues, disputes, unfair dismissals, and so on. So, we're going to reduce some risk in the process of this as well. So, Michelle, I'll let you take over. We've got another poll. Yeah, so I'm going to open this new poll up and there's quite a few uh, answers here. So choose which one that best relates to you. So what would your organisation like to get out of the one-on-one -on -one process? So I'm going to launch the poll now and that should be up on your screen. And all you have to do is select an answer from the options there. So would you like better business performance, 
better alignment to the strategy or operational plan of your organization? Is it more about employee engagement, lower employee turnover, or just overall less employee issues? So we've got less than half a voted, so make sure you get your votes in. We've got about 30 seconds left, but I can see some of you answering, so thank you so much. I mean, I guess it would be good to have all of these, but in terms of your organization and what, you know, the data you've collected and seen, what's the problem you're trying to fix by implementing this one-on-one -on -one process? So we've got about 10 seconds left. Thank you all for answering. All right, I'm gonna close the poll now. And I'm gonna share the results. So we've got 16% saying they want better business performance. We've got 20% uh, with better alignment to the strategy. Overwhelmingly, 51% have said employee engagement. 5% lower employee turnover and 8% less employee issues. Mel and George, what do you think about these results? Yeah, I mean, look, like you said, Michelle, to have everything would be great. Um, and it's funny that employee engagement is the highest scoring because, I mean, as a result of higher engagement, you do see reduced turnover and better performance. So it's almost like a byproduct. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'm on board with the decisions. Yeah, <laughs> So what we want to talk about is next steps, and it's actually going to cover up some of the engagement stuff. So it's it's all turning out just trumps, I guess. <laughs> so build, first thing we want to do is build executive appetite and support. You know, it's pretty hard to get anything done without that. So we want to explain the difference between appraisals and review process and live performance management. So we want to explain the difference between what we're doing now and what we want to move to. Uh, we want to talk about cascading goals, objectives and alignment and explain the one-on-one -on -one process and how this drives behavioural change. So we were identifying earlier that change management is one of the most difficult things. That's the behavioural change. So how do we drive that? We want to build evidence. So complete an employee engagement and alignment survey. Uh, and in fact, we do have an offer that we're still running where you can get our engagement tool for free <laughs> for three months. So it helps you run that data for free. So we can get some of the insights and that's going to be your evidence to support your next project. So ideally, you're running engagement surveys a minimum every 12 months. If you're not, you have access to give it a go now for free, which you can contact us about. Uh, also, you know, complete a productivity analysis. If you're a for-profit organisation, then this is typically done through EBIT, so earnings before interest and tax, um, so EBIT per employee numbers, and it's over a number of years because we want to have a look at the trend. Okay, so I highly recommend reaching out to um, one of us, you know, one of the people stream consultants. We can help you with either of those. Mm -hmm. the Evidence is always a great way to base decisions. Evidence-based decisions are always the most powerful and most likely to help you gain executive support as well. Definitely. So how to increase performance through one-on-ones in summary. So move to an online performance management system. Manual processes are archaic, not working. They're not working on, a, you know, business by, to business, it's not working on a global scale. You can see the data and evidence is there, but we can help it gather, help you gather it specifically to your business as well. So let's move to an online system with one-on-ones enabled, because paper is you know tedious and just doesn't work. Complete appropriate change management for line managers. Show them how to set objectives and review one-on-ones. Again, this is a service offering that we package up. So you know it's not something we're putting all on the HR team. We've got lots of support around this. Um, create linkages to remuneration where possible. So uh, if you can't do that, that's okay. You can create, we call it the stick and the carrot approach sort of thing. So the carrot could be, you know, um, eligibility for promotions. It could be for learning opportunities and so on. But if you can link it to remuneration, it tends to be pretty powerful. We also want to highlight benefits for managers and employees. So the what's in it for me, this is part of the change management. So when we are going around, we're saying this, and it's often, you know, 
not just three times convinces. We have to repeat ourselves constantly, especially now, because we're not just walking around. We can't just put things yeah. up. You know, you can put things on a share drive or SharePoint, but who is actually going there to look at it sort of thing? So, um, you know, this is where we need to make sure that we understand what, what the benefit to each individual is. Enabling te technology makes performance management come alive this is where you want to be, not a once a year painful process. It doesn't want to be a compliance tool just to keep HR happy. We want to make it interactive. We want to make it modern. We want to make it fresh. We want to make it powerful. We want to make it, you know, increase productivity. Yeah. It hasn't got to be a sit down lengthy process. It's just about capturing the key information. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Now, I mentioned earlier that you've got, um, I would come back to this, but we've got some uh, courses that are specific to industries that we've, uh, designed for you. So this is through Go One offering. It means that you can have a lot of online learning packaged up specific to your organisational industry uh, and we encourage you to uh, reach out to us. This is really cool because like I said, we've got the compliance stuff sorted. Previously what you'd have to do is have one provider for your compliance content, then you'd have to have a different provider for your um, you know, grow type learning and your upskill type learning. Majority of businesses are just at compliance stage. There's not a lot of upskilling happening. So now is a great time to be investing in your people to make sure that they come. We can increase the return on human capital. So how do we increase productivity? We can make sure that they're on track, not just with their goals and their KPIs, but how do we increase their capability as well? Yeah. I think given the people employees, like you say, this is a right, really great time to support our uh, employees through training yeah um, so they can't just go across the you know the room and ask people a question so if they had some bite-sized videos they could look at yeah what a great support. well yeah like you were just saying about performance you know it doesn't have to be long and lengthy neither does learning no, like exactly. we have just in time learning which yeah. we can do some quick five minute videos or one minute how to do this it could be something as simple as you know using excel or word or it could be you know something more in, in depth like um, you know project management training or leadership training Okay, I've done a lot of talking. <laughs> yes, and we've actually got a lot of questions. So ah. there's quite a few. Um, so we'll probably take about five, ten minutes. Um, as I, I said in the invite, we'll leave ten minutes to questions. So if you do have a question, ask them now. Um, we'll do our best to try, try and get through them all. But one of the first questions is, we currently complete one-on-one uh, -on -one check-ins weekly and we do do a quarterly performance review while this is completed uh, face to face or remote we do still keep an online form to track conversations and outcomes do you still keep some sort of tracking forms slash paperwork for these conversations yeah if the question is that was a long question i think if the question is do you still record the one-on-one -on -one conversations yes absolutely record all of them so the one-on-ones the quarterly reviews and the end of year reviews because everything is evidence to substantiate the review. Yeah, the more the more data that you can capture, the better. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's clear for both manager and employee and it drives down less um, contention or um, controversy. It also drives down any stress. Yeah, definitely record um, conversations, absolutely. All right, next question we have here. Who generally has the overall responsibility for one-on-ones happening? I ask because it usually becomes a chicken and egg scenario where the manager and staff uh, loaf off or don't take the initiative to set goals or objectives until it's too late. So my personal view is that managers should initiate the process, but what do you guys think? Ah, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. So actually, we uh, advocate this kind of practice, and this is actually what we teach in our, in our workshops. So when I say workshops, we have um, uh, manager acceleration workshops, which teaches them best practice in performance management. So how to have the one-on-ones, how to drive these kind of behaviours. So what we teach is manager sits down with the employee and says, all right, they have a conversation. This is what we're going to set out to achieve this year. These are the goals. This is the plan. Right, conversation. We haven't written anything down yet. The employee can go away and write the goals and then come back to the manager and they can refine together. So it tests the employee is understood and it also helps with those large reporting ratios. So if you've got one manager to 10 employees, you know, um, then it eases the workload a bit. 
if you've got like a bunch of um, employees that are the same, you can just set the same sort of goals and then copy them across in an online system. So that makes it super easy. So we can take the administration pain out of it so that the quality is what we focus on. I hope that answers the question. Lovely. Next question we have is, how do we have an effective one-on-one -on -one session? Should we include catching up on our day-to-day -day lives and not include work-related topics as well? topics, how do you break the barrier of feeling uncomfortable with your manager during the catch up, which causes us to make to not share as much and making the catch up not as fruitful? Is that my manager who asked that question? <laughs> 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 David, are you in there? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm don't overshare. It's okay. Um, but I think, you know, especially in this time, what makes you a good manager is fine tuning it towards the individual's needs. Now, I think it's important to keep things focused so you can set the scene um, and you know set the context at these one-on-ones and it really helps when you're if you're both sitting there with the actual um, performance tool open in front of you so I, I sit there um, you know in when I do so we catch up virtually and I sit there with my goals that are up in front of me and we go through each one you know yeah. and he's like all right how are we tracking with this one this and sometimes the conversation is, I'm comfortable with all of this. <laughs> and, you know, this is what we'll focus on here. And you seem to be doing that. And this is okay right now. Um, how did you go with this one that we spoke about? And then at the end, it's like, is there anything else you want to talk about? So if there's time at the end, we focus on it. So we don't suck up all the energy at the beginning, um, you know, with complaints and errors and whatever it might be. Um, so we focus back through, you know, we go through these items and sometimes it's just a, I'm how I'm comfortable with this. How is it for you, George? Because you're the yeah. manager. Yeah, definitely. I think, look, I think it depends on the person and the, the organisation. I don't think there's any wrong or right answer. Obviously, the idea of one-on-ones is so that we can check performance, make sure that we're offering the right support to our employees and the right training. But equally, I think if an employee wants to open up about a personal situation or they want to talk about something that's going to make them happy I don't think we should discourage that yeah but I think it's important just to have the balance yeah definitely yeah 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 I agree yeah cater it towards the individual that what makes a really good manager but make sure that we're still focusing on these KPIs yeah yeah don't dismiss them that's right yeah okay and I'll probably do a last question uh, here is there a solution for a manager who manages 20 to 30 personnel for conducting one-on-ones. Yeah, absolutely. So it's mobile enabled as well, which makes it super easy. Um, so, God, I wish this was two-way. I would love to know how that how they're doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, that poor manager doesn't have anything, any time to do anything except one-on-ones by the sound of it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, enabling it online, making it easy, and again, setting the context of or the expectation where the employee drives the activity. So what I mean is um, every Tuesday I have a catch up with my uh, manager. It's a, it's a set time every week. Yeah. Uh, prior to that meeting, it's my job to go in and mark the status. It's a traffic light, you know, red, orange and uh, green. So it's easy to understand. It's up to me to mark the status of each of those. And so then he can come in and have a high level view and go, all right, cool. The green ones are fine. So let's focus on the orange and the red. What do you need help with? Yeah. And that's how we can just make them super snappy and quick and it's effective and it helps me feel supported and listened to. So if you're doing that on a large scale, then it's going to be a lot easier than constantly going in, updating everything before the conversation and saying, look, this is where it's at. Drive the activity, like the KPIs, drive the activity through the workforce and it drives engagement with them as well. I think it's key to remember this is a two-way conversation, like you said, Mel, making, you know, we want to drive and encourage our employees to evaluate themselves based on the objectives. And sometimes with one-on-ones, it might be a five-minute catch-up and it might be a half-an-hour catch-up. I guess it depends on the discussion. Yeah. But equally, they can be quick, sharp conversations yeah. times against you. And still effective. Yeah. So, you know, but being mobile enabled, you can you could be you know just do it on the mobile exactly yeah on the laptop or you know whatever iPad. So depending on what kind of workforce you're in, um, it's it's mobile. 
Uh, do I, should we do one more question? We'll do one more question. Go for it. <laughs> we'll have come in just at the end then. I do want to get these in because I think they're really good. All right. So okay. how can you manage upwards when company objectives are unclear or the environment means objectives never get locked in? Yes. Good question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, in lieu of a strategic plan, do an operating plan. Most companies have that. Um, and uh, you can start by, you can start really simple by having one objective that says achieve all items as outlined in position description on time every month. Right? And that's a conversation. We actually, in our, in our performance tool, we actually have an area for position descriptions. And then we can have conversations around, um, we can start the process. So we're having conversations around, you know, what our tasks are in the PD. While it's not getting to the strategic piece, it's going to keep people on track so we're focused this way. Um, it's interesting to see, like, if you don't have a strategic plan, but this is a, a, gr a great tool to drive that sort of thinking and questioning. But in lieu of a strategic plan, use an operating plan um, in lieu of both. Go with achieve all items as outlined in position description every month. Set some core values and behaviours and a development plan. And, and that's a really simple and effective way to start. Really great answer. All right. We've actually run a lot over time, but you know what? I think everybody got some really good value out of it. And it seems like everybody is giving us some really great comments on how they found this webinar really helpful. So thank you for all your feedback. Um, Mel and George, thank you so much for running the webinar. Um, I have put in the chat box the engagement survey offer if you wanted to look at that. Um, and if you wanted more information, there is a after webinar survey where you can say, yes, I'd like some more information on our performance, learning, um, anything we have, we can help you out there. Um, again, thank you for everybody for attending, your interactiveness with the polls, and of course, your questions. Um, keep an eye out on your inbox for more webinars. And um, yeah, we hope to see you in the next one. All right, thank see you later, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.